listeners, as we look at issue 141 of the Star Trek Starship Collection, as we look at the Vulcan to whole ship, Apollo class transport. Uh, and here it is in the box. It's actually quite a nice model, actually. It's a, it's a really nice one. Uh, we'll have a look at that in a minute. Let's have a look first at the magazine. So it has a warp 9.6. Obviously, a transport ship. Uh, though it's Vulcan, um, I do believe the Federation actually use this. Uh, so here we have the classification. It's obviously Apollo, um, 24th century. Um, so it's just a sort of a transport ship. Very much Vulcan design, as you can see here. And obviously, um, to power to pole. Um, obviously, it was named after. The lady that was in uh, Enterprise, uh, the person who brings logic, um, Sarek's teachings back to the Vulcan people, um, which we obviously find out in Enterprise, but here it is here. So we get a nice CGI shot just here, obviously a lot of in-universe information. It goes on about, obviously, um, unification, part one and two, and why it was there. It's nice, worth noting that there's a surplus that they... Um, that they visit like a scrapyard thing and there's actually two ships here obviously the uh the discovery model which uh they made for um planet of the titans and then we've got a four nacelled excelsior here which i do believe was going to be but they're both there so we may end up getting them in the collection or we may not well we'll, we'll just have to wait and see uh so here we have so it's got the vulcan design so I mean, this ship was designed and built before Enterprise, um, and they've sort of gone for that sort of ring warp ring design, which featured heavily in Enterprise. But in in the terms of designing, this obviously was designed beforehand. But in terms of universe information, it's it's really keeping them within that limit lineage that we know that the Vulcan ships use uh, the warp ring design. Uh, but anyway, so we have. Um, obviously the water ring we have the main bridge impulse engines and landing ramp which is at the front of the vessel uh obviously they were going to be taking uh vulcan um romulan soldiers i should say to vulcan for an, a secret invasion uh which the romulans destroyed but uh that was in unification so then we come up to the design of the ship uh so I actually like some of these ships. I like, actually, I like this one here. It's quite a nice one just here. I like that. Uh, obviously, this was uh, one of the designs. Obviously, it, it, assemble, it assemble, resembles. No, get my words out. Resembles on what we actually got. So this is very close. Obviously, it appeared in um, Captured Pursuit uh, Tosk in uh, Deep Space Nine episode. I'm not too sure if that, it's in the first season, a couple of episodes in. Uh, episode three or four, I do believe, uh, where Tusk comes to Deep Space Nine, um, and he's sort of like a um, sort of like a like a game um, pursuit sort of thing, um, and they're trying to kill him, and they think that it's barbaric because he's sentient and stuff. Like that. Anyway, he arrives on the ship, which is um, the Vulcan shuttle sort of design, but it also appears in a few of the. Uh, Deep Space Nine episodes, and obviously it made its final appearance in a Deep Space Nine for the cause. Uh, docked on the upper pylon there. Uh, then we come on to obviously the production design of the Next Generation season five. Uh, they've done a few of these actually in the magazines where they've um, gone through the seasons on uh, in the books of these as well. So this is just basically going through how they come up with the sets and the designs and the production and all that on season five of the next generation. So that's quite interesting read. Uh, then we come on obviously to the trivia and where it first appeared, Unification Part One and Two. Uh, then we're going to be having a look at the Battle Cruiser issue one four two. We'll have a look at that when it comes out. But without further ado. Let's take a look at the model. And this is the Vulcan shuttle out, or the Vulcan transport shuttle, out of the packaging that the power say Apollo class. And do you know what? Having such a plain design, it's actually, Eagle Moss once again have gone all out. It's quite big. 
as you can see, it all sort of. I'm just going to tip it slightly and show you how. I mean, it really overlaps the, uh, the base there. So, so it's, it's a fairly big model. I'm quite impressed. Um, Considered the last one we had was the tug, which was fairly small. And then we've got this. And actually, it's a really nice design. It's it, Eagle Moss, like I said, have gone all out and it's really, really nice. So let's take a little closer look. So obviously we have um, the lights. Now they are, it is indented. And we do have the window uh, misalignment, as you can see. I'm just going to try and see if I can uh, show you a bit clearer. As I tip it, you can see where the indents are and the lights are just underneath. But it's so subtle that you don't actually realise it unless you're up really, really close and at certain angles as well. I'm just going to try and see if I can show you. But there is mis window misalignment, but they're not. It's not. It's not overly bad. Anywho, so we get some. Let's have a look at the back. So we get these nice clear. Um, red plastic here for the impulse engines and then the start of the warp the drive up here with the blue so that's really nice uh, inside now in inside the warp ring um, I'll go so you can see that it's it's near enough textured the whole way around and it's got this really nice little liner lining in it I'm trying to get a a nice there we go so we've got smooth areas at the bottom and then this sort of rigid design on the sides. I think that's really nice. They've actually done the, the inside the ring, which is really nice. I'm going to try and see if I can zoom in there. You can see that. Obviously, just the, the top section of this, they haven't done. Uh, in terms of die cast, uh, it's worth noting that the whole body is just the ring that isn't um, die cast. It's plastic, but the whole body here is is metal. Uh, there is a nice design on the front here on the landing ramp here. Uh, the bridge section as well. Then we obviously get uh, Vulcan right in here. Now, I would imagine this is only on one side. Now, I don't know whether that was actually on the model itself, but it's not on this side. We have a plain side. Maybe that's just something the model had or Eagle Moss forgot. I'm not entirely sure. Um, now this is a Vulcan ship, but I think they operated from the Federation. It goes on about that in the magazine. Just because as well, it's got this sort of Starfleet patterning on it as well, which we get on a lot of the Star Trek ships, um, on, the, on the Federation ships, shall I say. Uh, we do get it as well, like I said, on the alien ships, but uh, it's more prominent on the federation ones but it's, it's just a really nice design i mean for something that maybe looks a bit boring it actually it's got a lot of detail on it i mean it's even got the detail down here on the on the sides here of the warp ring uh they've even gone like i said with the the clear plastic here and there so that's really nice. I mean, you can see straight through it. Um, it's just, like I said, it's just a really nice design. Uh, it's a big, it's a big model as well. So you know, it's it's a nice size, and I like the bigger size model. I make most people do. Uh, but yeah, that is the Apollo class, the Vulcan transport. Anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you click to subscribe, and we'll see you at the next video.